time is coming where we had to change paint manufacturers. It wasn't exactly a popular decision that we had to make, but nonetheless we had to make it. Um, part of the challenge was is when you're in the restoration world, some of your customers are fairly critical in the sense that they want their car to be exactly as it was, all the way down to the type of paint that was used. We can't necessarily resolve the, the lacquers and things like that that were made back in the day, but one thing we can do is we can retain single stage paints and some of those items. This has become somewhat increasingly more difficult to achieve in this day and age. Now, also what's important in the restoration world is having a good archive of data for the color base. Now we left DuPont, admittingly, reluctantly, um, for probably one of the finest paint manufacturers in the world. Um, we switched over to Sickens. Sickens, ironically, was one of the original manufacturers of Romeo's paint products back in the 60s. So effectively, we're kind of coming full circle and we're bringing it home. Um, one thing that's nice about our new paint system is not only do we have an extensive archive of all the paints that we need to know about as far as replicating the formulation reasonably accurately, but we also have the opportunity to be able to put some of these paints back into a single stage formula. Just about every one of you that has your car painted, it's usually in two stage paint um, because that's just the standard day. Two stage paint isn't necessarily superior or inferior to a single stage paint, but it does have a different luster and it retains the color in a different way. Um, this becomes somewhat more recognized when you're doing single stage metallics like your car would have been when it came from the factory. You don't have that depth of gloss, but here's the thing. When the car was painted, how that paint lays on that car was well within the design of that car. So effectively, when you're having your car painted and you're using two stage paint, you're not really replicating the way it was. It's not a bad thing you're doing, it's just not exactly replicating the exact layout of the color of the car. Two stage paint versus single stage paint are clearly different ways of paint appearance on a vehicle. Especially when you have a vehicle that has so many style lines and shadowing cues that not Romeo does. Now we are shooting the Junior Scotto in a two stage, that means base coat, clear coat, process. The reason we're doing that is because this car has went through so much to get to this finishing point. And the customer is sticking with the Zagato style or Zagato paint. Uh, so we were able to pull it up. Now I'm just mixing up a quart and it's just straight up paint. This isn't this isn't reduced or catalyzed or anything just yet. This is just the base coat for that car. And I'm using just this amount for now because we're cutting in all the back sides of the doors, door jams, trunk lid, and things like that. And then later on, the next day or so, we'll paint the entire car as well. But when you think about it, that car's been here for a significant amount of time. It has went through a great deal of reconstruction to get back to where it is. It's kind of a big deal. The car was originally white. The customer wanted it to be in that Zagato silver. Now, if we were to do this exactly the way it was, it would be a single stage Zagato silver. There's something to be said about single stage and metallic paints. They just don't have the luster or the depth of gloss the two stage paints have, and they never will, because the clear coat is mixed in with the actual paint in a single stage effect. Anyhow, timing couldn't be better to switch over to a new paint supplier, because we don't cut the corners. What I mean is, is we don't use the cheapest primers and surfacers and sealers and epoxies and acid etches and all these other things we do when we're, restor we're in restoration mode on a car. And right now we're at the finishing point of a lot of cars and we're just starting up on a bunch of other cars. So cutting solutions um, is probably perfect timing right now. The reason we don't skip and use cheaper or alternative uh, linking systems within it is because effectively if product failure is going to happen we need to have the manufacturer warranty of that. Now they have the ability to analyze everything that we're doing. So if we're using for example one company's primer, another company's epoxy, another company's sealer, and then their top coat, they'll know that. They won't warranty the product. 
by the fact that most of our customers don't even live in the state, we have to make sure that no matter where they're at, this is going to be warranty. So, in this case, times everything. We'll be able to put in the Sickens sealer and Sickens base coat and the Sickens clear coat process on this car. And on the new cars that are in, we'll be able to break that link again with those. We'll be able to start with Sickens epoxies and primers and sealers and surfacers and colors and clears. I'm really glad that we're finally at a point where we're with uh, Sickens. It's been a very difficult time for us to try to break that relationship with the previous uh, manufacturer. And we're a little bit saddened over it, but we're not settling. We actually have every bit of superior paint to the Dupont. Hey, this is Rocket here at Vintage Customs. Uh, we're finally doing the last and final stages before the actual paint is applied to this Junior Z. Uh, what we're doing is we usually start, after it's been uh, initially primed, we start with a 320 grit sandpaper and then we start doing a wet sanding at 600 grit. And this is the most important thing because we have to make sure that the style lines and all the body lines are sharp, crisp, and we have to tape them all off to make sure the car looks perfect. Also keep in mind that this, this car will actually be the color of silver and silver is very unforgiving and so any imperfection or in, anything in the body that's not perfect will be seen very easily. pictures of this or you probably follow the dialogue on this and what it took to put this car back together. It has taken an awful lot. A great deal of this car had to be reconstructed. And I do mean reconstructed. But it's finally in color. And this is one of those things that the success of the end results is 99% of the effort put into it prior to paint. And that's true. I painted this. I was lucky enough to have a great finished product to work with. You can hide some defects in cars with certain paints. Like white, you can get away with murder. Silver, you can't get away with anything. If it's not right, it's going to show up in silver. It's a very difficult color to control sometimes. Especially when the grain in it is very fine, like it is in this car. This is a very difficult color to get control of if you're not an experienced painter. But it's done. Now the fun part, assembly. And then that will be delivery. I like these Zagatos. I like how they have morphed over the years of production. And I've always liked how they're way, way ahead of their time.
seen in the intro to this uh, segment, you've seen that this car is probably, it's pretty much been through hell and back to get to this point. And this car's gonna have a fantastic twin spark motor in it. It's gonna have just a new lease on life, so to speak, when it's all said and done. This car has been here for a very, very long time. Um, the most common question we ever get asked is, what does it take, what does it cost to get a car to this point? And there is not an answer I could think of that would not be a lie, because simply you just don't know. You don't know what's underneath the foundation, you don't know what's under the paint, you don't know the, the collateral damage that a car has been through in its life. And effectively, the finish level that the customer expects when it's all said and done. Now this car is painted and it looks great. And right now it's being color sanded and polished by Arab. And Arab is doing this for a long time. He knows how to get the luster out of a car second to none. Something to be said about that though. It's one thing to paint a car and have a relatively flat and flush finish to it when it's all said and done. And there are people who will be perfectly content with that end of finish. But then there's the, the other people, the people who, who want that absolutely dripping wet look all the time. They want that car to be just as flat as can be. You cannot do that just by spraying the gun with an expert skill and walk away. There's always gonna be a level of detail sanding needs to happen. And depending on what that luster needs to look like at the end of the day, determines how much detail sanding can happen. We have cars that have come and gone out of here that we put less than 10 hours of wet sanding compounding in, and they were just fine for that daily use and look, and they were gorgeous cars, and they have a lot of luster to them. It becomes somewhat difficult to calculate how to achieve that end result when you have a car that is, one, a dark finish, Two is also a single stage paint. Um, we chose to go single stage on this car. It's an expensive single stage paint. But we chose to go with the single stage paint, which means that the clear coat's in the color, because we're also trying to retain that originality. You cannot achieve the original finish and luster with the two stage paint. It will always have that greater than it was look to it. Anyhow, so this car was sprayed, and by all accounts, purposes, it was pretty flat and good paint job and just a little bit of sanding here and there polishing it up and it would have been more than worthy for the road and anybody who saw it would have been quite proud of it but there is that additional effort if done makes the car look so much better it's the difference between 99 points and 98 points that one extra percent may take an awful lot of effort to achieve it but it is a huge difference in the end results now, Ariel's got 30-something hours into this wet sanding process right now and compounding. He's almost done. It will be effectively done for the most part. Um, and it makes a substantial difference of how the car lays and holds. But again, this is not a task that is for the less experienced. You cannot do this at home with this level of success. To get a finish like this right now, which is absolutely glossy and you cannot see not one sanding mark in this. That takes a lot of skill and experience. And it's not something that most people can do. For that matter, I can't do it. Um, you have to have the touch. You have to know where your limits are on the paint so you don't cut it too thin and lose its ability to withstand UV radiation. Anyway, the point is, is you can look at this, and I realize you're watching this in high definition, and even at that, that is limited as to what you're actually seeing. This is a great finish. Ariel painted it, and Ariel's cutting it. The owner will be absolutely thrilled with the end results. But again, from the day it was painted to now, he's going to have well over 40 hours in the sanding and compounding process. Is it worth it? Absolutely. All right, what I started off with, what wet sanding is, I start off an 800 grit sandpaper, all wet. I knock the tops of the finish off, that way can level the panel nice and flat. And because it does it coarser, and you're not really sanding a lot with a thousand grit, because thousand grit is meant more for sanding out a run. So once I'm sanding out 800 grit with a thousand grit scratches, I moved up to a 1200. And once I felt I've sanded enough with the 1200 grit, I moved up to a 1500, which is what I stopped at. And once I've you know, wiped the paddle clean, looked it over, and felt happy with the paddle. I started off with my first step compound here, with a red pad. 
and just like so, apply just a tiny bit that I already have pre-mixed in here to the panel, just like so. I rubbed it out, spread it evenly, and buff away. And that first stage compound you see that I have spread on the panel now is just to get most of your sand scratches out. And once it's all nice and leveled out, you see some of the gloss, there's two more steps behind that that help you give even more of that wet and flat glassy looking finish. And into this panel alone, I probably have maybe two days work on this quarter panel alone. And most of the work is done in the wet sand. Yeah, I'm pretty aware of a lot of you guys' opinion on this car. This is mine. I'm building this to represent a very specific time frame in American racing. Back in the late 60s, cars had lots of graphics on them on the racetrack. Though my car will never, ever be track raced. I might take it out on club events, but I'm most certainly am not going to race it. I still want to capture that feel. Well, now that we've got the graphics painted on, and this is actually very tricky stuff. This is uh, gold leafing, and then it's pinstripe. The name on the back is gold leafing as well. All this needs to be clear coated over as to protect it. So, to do what's called an open blend is really difficult to do. Because what you have to do is you have to create a scratch that fades into an open panel. In other words, there's no legitimate place for the paint to literally seal in. This edge, that's a ceiling. The styling, not a ceiling. So I can carry it up and over the fender, I still have a problem in the front. So we're going to do the technique that's called an open blend. Now that open blend just means that we need to have our grit slowly fading away from the area of repair. This general area right here is about a thousand grit. This tape line represents everything above that and over this 1200 grit. Now effectively what we're going to do because this gold leafing easily dissolves if you're not careful when you're playing clear coat over. So we're going to float a little bit of clear coat over the gold leafing on the name and on the cloak. We're going to let it kind of slowly build up and seal over. Once that's done, then we're going to start clear coating over the whole thing. As we start to get further and further away from the repair area, that's when we have to start what's called a melting agent. We need to start throwing in a melting agent on the open panel. What that's going to do is it's going to give a place for the paint to effectively burn into the original clear coat that we have on this car. But effectively, once that's all done, that repair there and this here, it's kind of time to put my car back on the road. It's been off the road since 1973. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so I'm doing what is called a open blend. This is not something that's normally very easily to succeed at. What that means is, is because our Alfa Romeos are monobody construction, there's no real areas to kill off paint, like you don't have fenders that are bolted on and trunk lids and things like that to, to hide paint edges to. Um, so yesterday what I did was, is because there's gold leafing on the lettering of this car. You can't just throw paint on that because it'll activate the glue that's under it and it'll start to crumble up and lift off and that's a bad thing. So what we did is we lightly floated a little bit of clear coat over that and then we cut the whole panel so now we can bang on quite a bit of clear and give that depth of gloss that we need to really make that sign kick off. Okay, so with that said, what you're gonna see me do is, this is my clear coat ready to go. And this is a melting agent. So what you're going to see, you're going to see me pull the clear 
and then you're gonna see me pull a little further out, and then on the end of that, I'm gonna disconnect, and I'm gonna connect to this one, and I'm going to cross the edge towards the rear of the car, and this is going to help melt that clear into the panel. Now, it's a bit of a technique thing, and you have to have a, a good understanding of how paint melts into previous paint. Now, this car has, a, has been painted for years and years and years, so it's a little tricky because you're putting fresh paint on paint that's been well hardened, if you will. Um, but you're always going to have success if you know how to do it. So this is a bit of a technique thing. Um, so we're going to do it on the, the back sides of the rear panels and to the leading edge of the front panels. And we're going to melt it in. And effectively that clear that we're applying is going to melt into the existing clear. And the reason it's going to do it is because we have a well sanded surface for it to tie into and create that, that bridging, if you will. And with that said, I guess when you think about it, I have less than five things left to do on my car and then it's back on the road. I mean, they're trivial things like that. Now that once this is done, um, effectively all I really have to do is uh, put the rear view mirror back on, put the uh, sun visors in, just trivial things like that, and then uh, I'm ready for some summer fun. Now also you're going to notice that I have uh, not a paint suit. The reason I'm not in a paint suit is because, well, quite frankly, it's Saturday and I'm shooting my own car. But honestly, I'm not in a paint suit because I'm not reaching over the car to spray anything. Everything is directly in front of me, so I don't have to worry about materials coming off of me and falling onto the car. Um, and because I'm just applying a light coat of clear, I'm not really you know, doing any trick painting. It's not necessary for me to worry about all that. So, for those of you who are wondering. But in all cases, you always want to wear a respirator. You want to make sure you have good airflow ventilation. And the last thing that should be done is, this is going to be the last paint job that's going to be in our current paint booth. Though this is a qualified and it's a good paint booth, we have a new state-of-the-art paint booth being sleeved inside of this. Um, it's taken a while for it to get here, but now that it's here, um, uh, they start assembling it next week, so I'm excited about that. Okay, so when you're melting in a clear over an existing coverage, it's kind of important that you get the tape off and away from the paint as soon as possible so that paint, while it's still wet, can flow in a little bit into the existing paint job. So, that's what I'm doing right now. I just need to expose this and hopefully stop dropping any trash in the paint. I'm not terribly worried about anything underneath the car. But the way this is done up, and granted I've skipped an awful lot of steps you can learn from, but I have layers of tape so I can escape from the process at the end of the day. Now I just painted this 15 minutes ago, okay? But it is essential 
and we get this up and out of the way so that it can flow as soon as possible. And it's starting to look pretty good. I'm actually very excited about how this is finishing up. Again, I only have a few things to do to this car and I'm ready for summer. Uh, this car is always interesting because every time we showcase something we're doing on this car, I get a ton of emails from folks out there that either like it or complain about it. Like it or complain about it. Again, I don't want to sound rude, but I didn't build this car for you, I built it for me. And it was important for me that this car represented a very significant time frame in Italian racing in America. If you were to look at these cars from the 60s into the early 70s, you would see them looking very much like this, even with the lettering and the creativity it was attached to it. That was a pretty special time because this is when America was finally starting to take notice of what these little cars can do. So this is basically an homage to that gate opening opportunity of that time frame. And I'm quite frankly very happy with the way it's turned out. It's been a very long road to get to this point. And uh, I'm looking forward to after many, many years of playing with this thing, finally just taking it out and enjoying it. You can sing at home. You can sing low. You can sing at home. You can sing.